Hello guys, welcome to the Job Transit. So you have thought educated an academy. So we are in the process of discussion of your recall based questions on your NEET PG 2021. We are in the question number 17. We are almost the fag end of the discussion whatever is required for us, right? So I'm not exactly sure whether this question came in your exam uh, because few of the students, uh, quite a chunk of students said that yeah they had a question of this sort and few of them said that no there is no question of this sort. So I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen here. But I just want to make sure that we'll discuss regarding that, fine? This is a very simple question. There's nothing much to explain in this. So I'm going to take time a little bit and understand about our coagulation test, your PT, APTD, thrombin time, because a basic understanding of that will help us to overcome many of the doubts which comes in interpretation of the test, fine? So Hegman factor, the other name of Hegman factor, we all know it's factor 12, right? There's no doubt in this, as I said, it's directly you're going to be a factor 12. So what we're going to discuss here, as I said, we're going to discuss about the coagulation test your PT, a PTT and your thrombin time. The first thing I want to ask you and I want you to comment in the video as well. So for all the coagulation tests, whether it be PT, a PTT or your thrombin time, the first requirement is what coag your, when you take a blood, what is the anticoagulant you're going to use in the blood? That's one of my first requirement here. I need an anticoagulant, right? I just want you to comment it because this anticoagulant becomes extremely important because when I change the anticoagulant, there'll be minute seconds variation. And we are sure that in PT, APTT and trauma time, even variation in seconds will alter the patient's management, right? So this is very, very important. I just wanted to comment on what anticoagulant is that, fine? So let's go back to the discussion again. So what I'm, we are going to discuss is the test procedures, how we do in PT, how we do in APTT and how we do trauma time or whatever it is, fine? Why this becomes important, as I said, we it will help us to overcome the difficulty of why in APLA, I'm going to have an prolong APTD in spite of it being in thrombotic disorder, right? We'll come to that soon, right? So look at this. For all the coagulation tests, what is a prerequisite is PPP, which is platelet poor plasma. This is a prerequisite that will be achieved by your centrifugation techniques. Why this becomes very important is when I have platelets in the plasma, am I right in saying that this will produce tiny, tiny clots? But though it's not an exact clot, will they aggregate and form tiny, tiny disturbances? Yes. So that will be considered as a clot. And that will be considered an endpoint, which will interfere with my understanding of these tests, right? So I don't want any platelets. I have to remove the platelets from the plasma and I'll have the plated poor plasma, right? That's like a main prerequisite. We all know that prothrombin time is going to take care of my extrinsic pathway of coagulation, right? The basic thing which I'm going to use here is the extrinsic pathway of coagulation. So if it's extrinsic pathway of coagulation, it has to stimulate one of the path factors in the extrinsic pathway, which is factor seven both inside the body and outside the body factor seven is going to be stimulated by this guy tissue factor which becomes important so what i'm going to do is it's not there in my uh, plasma here which comes from the damaged endothelium so i'm going to add tissue factor right? we're going to add tissue factor to this test and i will add phospholipids i'll tell you what why the reason i'm going to add phospholipids the reason is inside the body in vitro two things gives me the phospholipid surface one little bit contribution from my endothelium and the major contribution is going to be from the platelets since I'm removing the places totally away, I'm going to add a little bit of phospholipids, right? Phospholipid replacement might not be so important for PT, but extremely, extremely important for APDD, right? Because this will have a little bit of intrinsic phospholipid activity as well, right? So I'm going to incubate at 37. You add calcium because calcium is required for my triggering the clotting cascade, and everything. And I'm going to record the clotting time, right? So the time from this to this, I'm going to tell it in prothrombin time. The unique thing about prothrombin time is it has lots and lots of variation. Because the factor which I add is not so standardized. In the same lab also for every batch I'll have a change because it keeps on changing, right? That's why we always report it as PT and INR. I'm sure in your internship you must have asked for a PT INR, right? International normalized ratio. I have to normalize it. Fine. So if you have any question which says gives a PT value, undoubtedly the examiner should give you the normal PT value in that lab. I'll just say my normal PT value in our lab for this batch is 11 to 15 seconds. I'm just giving you a heads up. This might totally change. I might have also told in the previous videos that it's 11 to 16 seconds or 12 to 16 seconds. It will change with every batch. Every batch I procure a reagent, you'll have a pamphlet in which says, okay, this is my normal PT time here. Fine. So either I have to normalize the ratio and use it. If INR, PT INR is not given and only PT is given, I need to know how to interpret it, right? So I said that my normal PT value is 11 to 15 seconds. So when I will call it an elevated prothrombin time is when I'm going to have anything more than three seconds, okay, from the upper limit of normal. 
which means let's say more than your 18 seconds upper limit of normal is 15 seconds here in this case, case scenario more than 18 seconds i'll call it elevated pt it's not always a dictum that i should have normal pt value in a question let's assume that i'm having a pt value of more than 25 seconds it's undoubtedly prolonged right i'll have a problem when it's very narrow it's 25 35 you don't want a normal pt value because normal pt is going to range between this only 10 or 17 18 maximum not more than that so when i have something more than 25 or 35 undoubtedly it's elevated pt you can go ahead with that fine that's how we do a pt so now i'll come to the next one next is apdd the same prerequisite stands here as well i'm going to use your platelet poor plasma only that's for sure right we do a platelet poor plasma and we act an activator clot activator it could be silica there are lots and lots of clot activator we activate this see what happens here is this aptt clot activator in the presence of phospholipid this aptt is going to consume entirely my extrinsic phospholipid intrinsic phospholipid quantity is going to be extremely less here right so this aptt one is going to activate it it will increase or activate my factor 12 okay this is important for me why this is important is this factor 12 will be activated only in in the uh, when i'm going to do the test outside the body right in vitro inside the body what happens is factor 12 is not essential this also came in an innocent question right not essential for activation of my coagulation pathway which means i can have a proper normal clot formation without activation of factor 12. it's not a very important contribution of the clot formation inside the body inside the body i don't differentiate as intrinsic and extrinsic pathway both of them merge together and act together and they're going to accentuate together this extrinsic and intrinsic is for our understanding so here my aptd is going to activate via my factor 12. so it will increase all the intrinsic pathway of coagulation you know the sequence and finally it's going to result in a clot formation i'll tell why this is important right so i'll add the calcium i'll add incubate and i'll record the clotting time that's going to be my normal aptd fine we'll look at how to interpret and why my factor 12 is important let's take that i told you factor 12 is not important for my clot formation inside the body right but factor 12 is very very essential for my understanding of the intrinsic pathway outside the body let's say that a patient has a factor 12 deficiency a person has no factor 12 do you think there'll be any problem in the clotting in the body in the person no because i don't want that so in other words in a factor 12 deficiency i will not have symptoms of bleeding very important there will be no bleeding at all in the body what will paradoxically happen is it will result in thrombotic episode because you must have read for sure this factor 12 is one of the important component to activate your plasminogen activator it's important for fibrinolysis right it's important for fibrinolytic pathway so when factor 12 is gone clotting is not affected the removal of clot is affected so fibrinolytic path will be affected so there may be episodes of thrombosis paradoxically right so i'm having a patient with thrombosis predominantly no bleeding problem at all and i'm going to evaluate the patient what will happen to aptt that will be prolonged right because aptt the intrinsic understanding what's then outside the body is predominantly based on factor 12 activation so factor 12 is unique no bleeding disorder but a prolonged aptd remember this this is a unique condition so it might come in an mcq fine so now let's go to aptd per se so when i take aptd again these values also vary batch to batch same lab and different lab right so you have again an approximate value only 35 to 41 seconds or 42 seconds right this is a current batch value again i might change it in future because it differs based on the current batch if i'm going to see the next batch changes say some 34 to 40 i'm going to use that right so which means i will call something an elevated aptt when i'm going to have more than six seconds from the upper limit of normal pt was three seconds here it's more than six seconds this is also i want you to remember fine got it so there is a repeat question which keeps on coming right you have an isolated aptt prolongation What's the next thing you do? Okay. You have an isolated prolonged APTT. The first thing you have to do is you have to rule out. Remember this, you have to rule out von Willebrand factor or von Willebrand disease, right? Because this is much more common than hemophilia or the antibodies against hemophilia. After ruling out von Willebrand disease, yes, you are going to go ahead with your mixing studies. That's how I'm going to evaluate these patients, right? So this is about APTD, how we're going to do it, fine? Okay. So. Uh, next we will slightly have an, a brief understanding about thrombin time because thrombin time is not generally done 
I don't generally do a thrombin day. If it is done, what is going to be interpretation? So it's simple test, platelet poor plasma. I directly add thrombin. So if I'm going to directly add thrombin, there's only one step after thrombin. What is that? Fibrinogen to fibrin, right? If you look at this, I don't want calcium here. I don't want phospholipids here because calcium and phospholipids are very, very important for the intrinsic path and the common path. My factor 10, factor 5, that's where it's very, very important, right? So I don't want any of them. I add thrombin and I'm going to record it. So this is going to test only one factor, fibrinogen levels. Okay. So in other words, whenever my fibrinogen goes wrong, whether dysfibrinogenemia or congenital absence of fibrinogen, or can it be in DIC? Yes, the fibrinogen lowers. Whenever fibrinogen is not produced or consumed, I'm going to have an altered APTT, sorry, altered thrombin time. Thrombin time will be increased only in case of a fibrinogenemia or this fibrinogenemia. These are my inborn errors, right? Or it could be in a place where I have DIC or fibrinogen production is less. On all those conditions, my thrombin time is going to be elevated. So most of the MCQs which comes will not have thrombin time because even in DIC, I'm not going to go with thrombin time. You guys know what is the best thing to diagnose, right? I'm going to do, go with D dimer. That's definitely best for my FDP to understand about DAC. I'm not going to have this. And again, these are rare conditions. We don't encounter day to day basis. So that also is a very rare thing. So only we don't in interpret thrombin time most commonly. Thrombin time, the normal thrombin time is 10 to 19 seconds. This is pretty standard and anything more than 20 seconds, since there's not much of variation, anything more than 20 seconds, I'm going to call it an elevated thrombin time, fine. So we had a question, and which I'm not sure it's Hegemon factor. We had discussed something in and around the coagulation profile. I did ask you a question. Please do comment on the question. What is the anticoagulant? We're going to use it for your age estimation of your PT or your APDT or thrombin time, fine. I have an image, a video of how a prothrombin time is being done because they are all automated. You might have an MCQ later on. I'll upload the video in the coming months. Uh, so how a prothrombin time is done in our lab, and you will be able to know, say, at this power, I'm going to centrifuge it. I'm going to pipet it out very very the instruments will have cuvettes this much i use 50 microliter so nothing can be seen in the naked eye the clot formation cannot be seen in the naked eye everything is automated right i'll have i'll share it once fine okay so if you have any doubts do comment below all right and if do download the anacademy app we have started the discussion on innocent we have daily at 10 pm we'll be having discussion of 2025 case scenarios a perfect proper evaluation from a pathologist's point of view how i'm going to evaluate the case scenarios i hope that will be helpful for any set and upcoming need to next exam fine as i said if you have any doubts in the recall please comment below if there is anything which is going to drastically change that diagnosis based on the whatever getting things i'm getting we'll see how to change it fine like the video and subscribe to the channel for more such videos thank you for your time see you soon till then bye bye from dr anjit bye bye